glad to have you back on Daybreak if you've just joined us. It's now time for the press review. A first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive with analysis. Well, let's take a look at the front pages, starting with our sister publication and this day. Uh, describing the Nigeria federal government is bound to labor as it shelves plan to end fuel subsidy from July. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Silver, uh, says uh, Buhari against subsidy removal. Lawan, that's the president of the Senate, appeals to NLC, the Nigeria Labor Congress, TUC, Trade Union Congress, to cancel protests. Postponement sends bronze signal to foreign investors. That's according to oil marketers. An APC, the ruling party, says removal will heighten inflation, costs, and due hardship. Labor petitioned state governors over proposed hike in petrol price. Other headlines on the front page of this day this morning. Despite COVID-19, over 14.2 million passengers traveled by air in 2021. Military seizes power in Burkina Faso, whereabouts of president unknown. Marginal fields, NUP RC invites reserve uh, bidders after winners fail to pay within stipulated time. And finally, Gandhiji, that's the governor of Kano State, uh, I will sign death sentence of Hanifa's killer with speed if. Pick a copy to find out details of the stories and more. In the Punch newspaper, uh, it's leading with uh, that protest that could be. Uh, Labour set for protest. Government suspends subsidy removal. The NBA warns the government. No going back on protest. We observe deceit in new twist. That's according to Labour. And that's the picture right there. A coalition storms PDP. ABC Secretariat demands Southern President. Coalition of Civil Society groups. They want one for 2023. Auto gas, a federal government to convert 200,000 vehicles, plants to 580 refueling centers. Uh, the federal government probes, probes online banks over breach of customer assist, a day to privacy, and uh, five year old Hanifa uh, Kano State revokes private schools' licenses, uh, killer proprietor remanded. Here's the front page of the nation via headline government petrol subsidy stays. And the Daily Sun federal government stops fuel subsidy removal and uh, jam fixes UTME for April the 20th. Silver forms begins February the 12th. And the CBN DBN spend 5.4 trillion naira on COVID 19 in one year. Well, the leadership is reporting that a fuel subsidy federal government states head for showdown over FAC remittances and government suspend plan to remove subsidy labor in system protests. FG, that's the federal government, kickstarts one million car auto gas conversion march. The internet, international paper is quick now. Daily Express, Boris Johnson warns Putin of painful and bloody invasion. The Telegraph reports U.S. President is preparing to send thousands of soldiers to Eastern Europe in the event of a Russian invasion of Ukraine. And The Guardian says Johnson faces fresh outrage over birthday party in number 10. Let's look at the Financial Times. NATO member states have begun sending fighter jets and ships to Eastern Europe in case uh, conflict in Ukraine escalates quickly and that's the front page of the financial times this morning and the Times says crisis talks over ukraine as u.s troops put on alert as johnson there with his birthday cake well let's bring in emmanuel Velo for the press review this morning great to see you emmanuel as always so let's begin with this day as usual the federal government of nigeria bows to pressure we heard from the finance minister yesterday the president of the senate as well as the minister of state for petroleum resources who says the president is not okay with subsidy removal Imano, do you think this was more of an economic decision or a political decision uh we are counting down to the 2023 elections uh barely 15 16 months from now Good morning, Adil. So you are right. Um, there's a bit of both. Um, there's a bit of uh, the political, you know, uh, side of it. There's uh, a bit of also the what economic sense it is making. Uh, like we were saying just yesterday, we were we were saying that look, uh, not many, not no. I don't know if anybody was actually really uh, a fan of any form of increment of uh, 
the, you know, the petroleum prices uh, and all sorts of voices, very important voices have weighed in to say, look, uh, the suffering we increased, it was, it's inhuman, uh, you can't even imagine it. We've had two years of, uh, we had a, a, a full year of, a log, of lockdown 2020. 2021 was nothing also to write home about and then to start thinking of increasing, uh, well, uh, you know, the prices of oil. It's ill-timed, like uh, the finance minister put it. But you, 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 you can't run away from the flip-flopping of uh, government on the matter, you know, starting in November. I think one of the papers reporting the timelines. Uh, when in November last year, the uh, government was very clear about it, that it was going to withdraw these uh, subsidies and now uh, backing away. It could be also as a result of better thinking, better planning, uh, also a better reasoning, and um, you know, uh, making these policies to work for the people rather the other way around. Um, a policy with a human face. The economist, the hard-nosed economist will tell you that uh, it's not in fact right as we speak now, right now. Uh, the, the oil marketers are even kicking, saying that, look, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. Uh, there are people who tell Tell you that these subsidies don't make sense and that yes uh, they should be removed but a lot of people will say uh, considering the times we're in uh, we uh, it doesn't make any sense uh, to impose further suffering on the people so at this one you have it it's a triumph of both uh, some good reasoning and uh, I think a lot of people will wake up this morning <laughs> saying um, you know relieved uh, that this uh, did not happen um, uh, or after all uh, it's been postponed uh, while others are uh, saying that look it's better we bite the bullet now uh, and, and take the, the bull by the horn as the, the, for, the, for lack of better uh, uh, words on, on this matter. To Emmanuel, say, look, uh, let's just do what we can do. But Emmanuel, mm -hmm. you also don't want to pay more for petrol. <laughs> Interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think all of us, I, I'm sure nobody wants to pay, <laughs> wants to pay more. But that, that's, the, that's the problem. A lot of people uh, they think that uh, the hardship, the crisis that, that we bring, is something beyond contemplation and so a lot of people i think are happy that this uh, this has uh, this has happened the economists we think differently say differently and say those subsidies have not been working for anybody mm -hmm. and that those money should be plowed into be bet uh, better areas the governors for instance wouldn't be happy with this uh, they were asking for more money it's already a paper is uh, reporting that um, you know there's going to be a showdown uh, with over those remittances again well, we wait to see how this pans out, Emmanuel. Still in this day newspaper, uh, Ganduje al signed death sentence of Hanifa's killers with speed if. Uh, that's the five-year-old Hanifa Abubakar. Uh, we also hear that the Kano state government has revoked the private school's license uh, of the killer proprietor and has been remanded. Um, Emmanuel, for the love of money, uh, five-year-old Hanifa Abubakar uh, was forced to death by her teacher who should have been protecting and uh, leading her to education. Uh, what justice, if any, is there for people and those who have no value for the lives of humans, especially a little girl like Hanifa? It's a, it's a, it's a dark story, it's a sad story, it's, um, it's, it's heartbreaking. And uh, you just can't even find the words for it. I, I, I personally, I couldn't even read some of those stories. I, it, and when you look at the face, the angelic face of Hanifa, and you look at her murderers, and you begin to wonder, the contrast is just so uh, gruesome. And so it's on, sometimes you just don't even want to look at it. And yes, the speed with which Ganduje said he was going to carry out the justice is, is justified. Uh, with even the first lady saying that if she has her way, maybe outright, uh, you know, uh, jungle justice straight up. Uh, but uh, the, 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 gov the governor saying that as soon as it's, uh, it's, uh, the, as far as uh, justice or the law can, uh, can afford it, he will happily, happily. Uh, I think he has got a lot of danger. Almost every human being uh, of goodwill behind that. Uh, but this also brings up all sorts of issues about schools. Uh, we've seen so many of these stories around schools. What's happening in the schools? What's wrong with our school? What's going on with the monitoring system? Um, what about the quackery that is in that sector? Uh, the, the, unlock, the schools that are not even supposed to be schools in the first place, and with the Kano state government actually withdrawing licenses. Uh, those are the bigger issues uh, this kind of uh, matters raise. Uh, the problem of inspection, the crisis of um, control and standards, standardization, and all the other issues around schools. Uh, it begs uh, even the issue of uh, professionalism and, and the Ministry of Education. What is leadership doing in this matter? Why do we have to wait until this kind of gruesomeness? Uh, who, is, who is giving out this license? 
circumstances uh, beyond revoking shouldn't somebody actually be punished for uh, some of some of these things so uh, this uh, these are the issues uh, the bigger issues and they, they have to be tackled as we deal with the human side um, uh, 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 tragedies around this uh, around the matter mm. so uh, the government says all private schools need to come and revalidate their licenses perhaps this is getting to understand who we are leaving these children in care of. Uh, but let's look at all the stories. Making the front pages of this day and leadership is what's happening in uh, um, Burkina Faso. Uh, Imano, yesterday, uh, leadership is saying despite ECOWAS sanctions, army strikes in Fort West African country, these days, says military seizes power in Burkina Faso, whereabouts of presidents are known. Uh, what is actually going on? Uh, is it that West African countries no longer see the importance of democracy? Because when you look at the, pro the jubilation on the streets of Wagadougou yesterday, you begin to wonder, what exactly is going on? Are the people in support of the military takeovers all of a sudden? Well, well, you know, even President Biden, who is supposed to be the champion of global democracy, is sounding those warnings in his first year, you know, in office that, look, democracy is in danger, not just in the United States, but uh, elsewhere around the world. And um, uh, these schools are reminders that, look, <laughs> it's not yet a rule for democracy, especially in Africa. And that, um, well, the soldiers could strike at any time. Yes, like the leadership newspaper is saying, in spite of all the conventions around these issues, the warnings, and even the outright condemnation, the Nigerian government already condemning uh, this. But then you look at the people, like you, uh, this why you noted, really ha happily welcoming the people they see as liberators. Uh, this is serious well, a warning and uh, you know, a call for action by, by governments to, to, and, the, and then those in leadership to know that, look, it's about people's aspiration and that it's really matter and that uh, sometimes some of these conditions make it almost easy uh, for uh, situations where people uh, we hail uh, undemocratic takeover of, of, of government so yes it's a um, it's a it's a warning shot from Burkina Faso it could, it could have happened any in any other place no no one or no place is immune and uh, what these people do is to actually feed on the discontent of course uh, military rules are, are, are condemned all over the world nobody accepts them they're undemocratic uh, and that they shouldn't be as acceptable but then when you look at the conditions that makes them uh, the, the military leaders the young officers who took over power were pointed to those discontent in the society the pains, uh, the crisis, uh, uh, what looks as if the lack of leadership. Conditions that probably you find almost um, uh, everywhere. And so government needs to be very serious about uh, people's aspiration, people's concern, people's welfare, because those feed uh, those kind of uh, takeovers. Manya, we are content with your take this morning. Thank you so much. <laughs>